Well, good morning. In the chapter of 10, in the wonderful book of Isaiah, I just studied this in a few books, and boy, what a terrifying chapter this is, because it speaks of where we very uh, we are very close in time to now. Um, I always uh, read this book like I'm reading our story, whatever time we're in, I think this story pertains to all the human condition throughout time. And I know that these things happen in a time in history, but these things always reoccur. And this is our story. So I'm going to read it as such. Woe <clears throat> to unjust judges. This, by the way, is the Living Bible paraphrase. And a little easier to understand this uh, chapter in, uh, in uh, King James, uh, and I think it's quicker to the point. Though it misses certain points, it is quicker to other points. Woe unto the unjust judges, and to those who issue unfair laws, says the Lord. Uh, they are uh, changing laws, These uh, this generation. They are taking unjust. They're taking things from the people who've earned them, giving them to people who didn't, is, turning the legal system, uh, the justness of the world on its ear, turning it upside down. So that there is no justice for the poor, the widows and orphans. Yes, it is true that thy even rob the widow and the fatherless children. Now spiritually, uh, a, a widow is somebody whose husband is dead. The bride of Christ is dead to them. They're they haven't come to Christ yet. They're needing Christ. Uh, the orphans, the fatherless, same kind of condition. Uh, um, so uh, this, is, this has two foes, spiritually as well as a carnal thought. Oh, what will you do when I visit you in the day when I send desolation upon you from a distant land? We see this today in all the countries of the world. The borders have been torn down. And people who don't understand that culture is being allowed to disseminate and uh, destroy the cultures of all countries and to melting them into one uh, culture. Going on right now today. It's been going on for several years and has already passed the point that it can't be repaired or fixed. And not that it uh, is God's plan. This is God is using these people to bring judgment on an unfaithful, unloving child who has turned against his father. To whom will you turn then for your help? Where will you, uh, where will your treasures be safe? I will not help you. You will stumble along as prisoners, or lie among the slain. And even then, my anger will not be satisfied. Uh, this is where we're going. This is where God has finally had enough of our insolence and disrespect to him. Uh, but my fist will uh, still be poised to strike you. Assyria is the whip of my anger. Uh, military strength is my weapon upon the godless nation, doomed and damned. He will enslave them and plunder them and trample them like dirt beneath his feet. This is the, when we talk about the Assyrian, this is, uh, this is uh, a people who worship a god other than the god of Christianity, uh, mainly uh, Muslim nations and so forth. But the king of Assyria will not know that it is I who sent him. He, he thinks he's doing all this himself because he's so smart and he's so strong and powerful. But he is actually just being a tool of God to uh, whip into shape his, uh, his unloving child who is a disobedient and hard-headed towards him. He's being used as a means to get... Uh, the child who uh, must love him because that is his design uh, to come to that to come to light of mind and heart. He will merely think he is attacking my people as part of his plan. 
to conquer the world. He will declare that every one of his princes will soon be a king, ruling a conquered land. If you look at the people that are in charge of this movement of the world today, uh, oh, I'm trying to think of that guy's name that runs the uh, the uh, uh, the federal. Uh, oh, oh, that's escaping me now. There's a, it's where the business, the new government is a government of business heads is who's running the, the new world order. On all, we can see all of our, all of our uh, political people have already given into it. The World Economic Forum is who I'm thinking of. There's an old German gentleman who, who heads that all off. Now this guy is thinking this is all his plan. He's been pushing this plan since 1972. And all of the world's governments he now has in his hand. He thinks this is his plan. He doesn't realize he is being used by God as a whipping stick. Uh, we will destroy Calamo just as we did uh, Galgamesh or Koreshmesh. He will say, and Hamath will go down before us as Arad did, and we will destroy Syria just as we did Damascus. Yes. We have finished off many a kingdom whose idols were far greater than those in Jerusalem. They, he's rear, he's lumping the religion of Jerusalem, the spiritual connection with uh, the God we serve, the Jesus Christ. Uh, he's lumping them in with all the other idols. And uh, Samaria. So when we have defeated Samaria, and her idols, we will destroy Jerusalem with hers. So, um, this guy's after Jerusalem, the spiritual state, the truth. And uh, this is his fatal mistake. After the Lord has used the king of Assyria to accomplish his purpose, then he will turn upon the Assyrians and punish them too. For they are proud and haughty men. They boast, we in our own power and wisdom have won these wars. We are great and wise. By our own strength, we broke down the walls and destroyed the people and carried off their treasure. In our greatness, uh, we have robbed their nest of riches and gathered up kingdoms as a farmer gathers eggs, and no one can move a finger or open his mouth to peep against us. This, uh, this old guy that runs this new world government, he's going to be mighty, mighty haughty. And by that time, Elon Musk is going to have his space stations uh, floating in outer space, trying to reach the planet Mars. I know this sounds crazy. It sounds like a crazy movie from 50 years ago. You know, because uh, Elon Musk... Is thinking the human race is doomed, so he's going to spread the uh, the human seed uh, to the neighboring planets, which I believe Mars is his target area. All these people are playing parts of these kings that are being used to teach Jerusalem um, um, a lesson. To, not Jerusalem, but uh, Israel. This is Israel, people who have gone to the way of thinking of the carnal and away from the spiritual. They've left the garden, and they are now uh, thinking in the carnal. But the Lord says, Shall the axe boast greater power than the man who uses it? Is it the saw greater than the man who saws? Can a rod strike unless the hand is moving it? Can a cane walk by itself? And the point being here, this um, all these old rich billionaires club who's trying to shape the world they are empowered by none other than god himself so that this plan can be told so that this plan can come to fruition and everyone can uh, every knee can bend and every head will bow to jesus christ the true lord and god and savior of this planet not a spaceship not a new form of government not a new idea None other than Jesus Christ himself is the plan of salvation for this planet. And Israel has taken their eye off of that salvation. 
and it is coming uh, to a place where God is going to remind us in a most horrible way uh, why we need that salvation. Because of all your evil boasting, O king of uh, uh, Assyria, the Lord of hosts will send a plague among your proud troops and strike them down. Something's coming to the powers that take over all of our countries and with this new government system. Uh, sounds like a plague. God, the light, and the Holy One of Israel will be the fire and flames that will destroy them. In a single night, He will burn those thorns and briars. He likens them to thorns and briars. Not good things in this garden, but the, the bad things, the weeds. And uh, the Assyrians who destroyed the land of Israel, Assyria's vast army is like a glorious forest, yet it will be destroyed. The Lord will destroy them, soul and body. Uh, this God says, don't fear those who can kill your body, but fear him, fear him who can kill your body and spirit. Uh, they're going to lose not only their flesh bodies as we all are, but these guys have no salvation because they do not look to Jesus Christ. They look to other means for salvation. And this is also the carnal, the danger of the carnal mindedness over the spiritual mindedness. As when a sick man wastes away, uh, they're going to turn him into a skeleton, getting skinnier and skinnier. They're, like, uh, they're going to be eaten out from within, just like you see the United States is turned into a skeleton today because we're being eaten out from within with a sickness, a sickness of sin and selfish, selfishness. Only a few from all that mighty army will be left, so few that a child could count them. Then, at last, those left in Israel and in Judah uh, will trust the Lord. Israel is uh, the given people that's, uh, that comes and chooses Jesus Christ. Judah... Uh, is uh, the carnal minded, the milk of the the milk of the thing, but not really the Jerusalem part of the thing. But we're going to be seeking God. Here comes this remnant. We'll trust in the Lord, that Holy One of Israel, instead of fearing the Assyrians. They're not going to have this fear. A remnant of them, none of this, a remnant of uh, Judah, which is Christians. But like, like I said, most Christians are very carnal minded today. But there's going to come a remnant of them. This is the spiritual thinking people, the people that go through the revelation of Jesus Christ. Of them will return to the mighty God. Because we, when we understand that this book is a spiritual thing, it speaks to the spirit in us, and we can stop reading it with our carnal eyes and read it with our spiritual heart, then we start to serve a mighty God. But through Israel, be now as many as the sands along um, um, along the shore. There's a lot of people saying, I'm a Christian. Let's save me, Lord, Lord, Lord. Look at all the things I've done in your name. I've built hospitals. I've saved people. I have uh, did all these marvelous works in your name. And Jesus says, go from me. I never knew you. So there's a lot of people in Israel. But uh, that don't mean that they're in Jerusalem. Yet only a few of them will be left to return at that time. God has rightly decided to destroy his people. Yes, it has already been decided by the Lord God of hosts to consume them. This is a frightening part of this book to know that, that uh, we have driven God's love into a point that he is going to be angry at this time. Of course, God... Is not a, he is not contrived to time. God is a, he's in all times at the same time. So, of course, he already knows uh, this story. Therefore, the Lord God of hosts says, O oh, my people in Jerusalem, and we're talking about to the spiritual thinking, we're talking about to the people who has gone through the revelation of Jesus Christ, don't be afraid of the Assyrians when they oppress you just as the Egyptians did long ago. It will not last very long. In a little while, my anger against you will end, and then it will 
rise against them to destroy them. Um, just like any father, no matter how angry he is at his child, and if he has to whip and to correct that child, and we're not talking about physical whipping or beating with a rod, but with hard times, uh, to bring around the good of the child, it, it's one thing. But when somebody else is whipping that same child for their own means and outcomes and desires, then uh, uh, God sees this as a very different light. And his anger will quickly turn off of the child whom he's trying to correct because he's done learned his lesson. And it will turn on them that God used to teach him that lesson. The Lord of hosts will send his angel to slay them in a mighty slaughter. Like in the time when Gideon triumphed over Midian at the rock of Oreb. Or the time God drowned the Egyptian armies in the sea. On that day, God will end the bondage of his people. He will break the slave yoke off their necks and destroy it as decreed. Look, the mighty armies of Assyria are coming. Now are at Anta, Aoth. Now at uh, Migron. They are stoning, they are storing some of their equipment in, uh, at Mishkanash and crossing over the pass. <clears throat> These people are crossing your borders right now today. They're on the TV every day being used as fodder for, new, fodder for news anchors to get you to vote the way they want you to vote, to get you not to vote the way they don't want you to vote as they are controlling us. We are in the hands of the Syrians today. Uh, <clears throat> they are, these people are coming. They are staying overnight at Geba. Fear strikes the city of Ramah. And the, as we look at this uh, on our TVs, our country going down, not only our country, but the countries of the world, uh, now that that crown that was a descendant of David has ended when the old queen had died and uh, her son, who is now in the system of that one world government we were just talking about, uh, we, are, uh, we lost that protection of that crown, which had so much to do with the world being what it was for the last few hundred years. All the people of Gabea, the city of Saul, are running for their lives. Well, many of you scream in terror, O people of Gilam, and shout out a warning to Las, uh, to Las Laras, for the mighty army comes. They're saying it's coming, it's happening. These people are coming. Everything we know, all of our Christian churches are in danger. We are, we are going to be overrun. A poor Oh, poor Asimov, what a fate is yours. <clears throat> there go the people of Mandela, all fleeing. And the citizens of Gibeam are preparing to run. Uh, this is pretty close to where we are now. Everybody's fleeing to the countryside, trying to get out of the cities, getting out of the concentration of these armies that are flooding over our borders. But the enemy stops at Nob. For the reminder of that day, he shakes his fist at Jerusalem on Mount Zion, That's where everything we think we know spiritually is going to be shaken. Everything in this Mount Zion, this mountain of God, the, what we call the Christian community, uh, God is going to shake his fist at it. Then look, look, the Lord, the Lord of armies of heaven is chopping down the mighty tree. He is destroying all of that vast army, great and small alike, both officers and men. He, the mighty one, will cut down the enemy as a woodsman's axe cuts down the forest trees of Lebanon. Boy, I tell you, if you think of what this means spiritually, uh, what's happening here. Uh, God has this child that he's done everything for. And this child is taking his eye and heart off of his father. 
and he has become unruly, damaging, and harmful to the garden itself that God has planted. And God is going to let this child be overrun uh, with a very angry, very volatile, dangerous people. And uh, because God is removing his protection, his hedge, and it's a horrible time coming. This is tribulation. How close are we to that in the carnal sense, the physical uh, sense? Who can say? It's probably like it always is. It happens one inch at a time, one day at a time. You don't even realize you're in it when you're in it. But when you look at how far we've drifted away from freedoms and liberty and how, how close we're drifting away to a new state of rule of the world, it's uh, probably not that long. Everybody lives in the Internet now one way or another. And the people who run the Internet and the... Uh, uh, those that uh, that dimension is has a great power on the earth uh, unlike has ever been seen before so uh, how long before it happens who can say it, it's an evil generation that looks for a time it looks for a sign uh, it's best for us to keep our eye on jehovah the god of the covenant the god of forgiveness and uh, think spiritually try to get away from spank, uh, thinking uh, carnally because uh, the carnal there's no rescue from that carnal body that physical body is dying it's diseased it's and when it talked about that being wasted away like a skeleton getting smaller and smaller spiritually we are talking about uh, our state our carnal state it is wasting away we have to make that leap from carnal to spiritual we have to start thinking in terms because God is the Spirit, and we all have, we are born with the Spirit of God in us. And this is the only thing that's going to uh, uh, survive this uh, thing we're in. Grandkids, uh, if you're following along, I hope that uh, you're reading uh, your studies. I hope, that you're, I hope that you understand that when God tells this story, He's not an angry, hard father. But he is a judgmental father. He judges us. And if we are bad, if we are, uh, if we are evil, if we've gone over to the carnal, uh, to the dark side, then uh, uh, he's going to bring us back to this place of spirit, this garden that he so longs for us to be that he's created us for. And uh, so it's hard. It's hard on all of us at times. But know this. It's a loving God that chastises us. A God that didn't care for you, like if you think in the physical sense of a father that don't care enough for you to correct you because he's too busy being drunk and having a good time of his, his own self to uh, correct you, uh, that's not a very loving father. But a, lo a father that takes the time to give you correction and make sure that your heart and your mind goes in the right direction, uh, that's a true loving father. And that's what we just witnessed here in this book. And so if we're not talking about a switching or a spanking, we're talking about really, truly hard times. Because we are really, truly, deeply in need of it. Because it's through these hard times that uh, we earn our stripes. It's through these hard times that we can become a, um, a, a child of God and not a child of the devil. So with that being said, I hope you've enjoyed uh, following along in this uh, book. And uh, if uh, you got anything out of it, come on back and read with me again sometime. Look us up, grandchildren. We're in the book. And uh, if, uh, I hope you're doing well. I hope you're kind to each other. And I hope that uh, if anybody stumbles across these videos in the future, if you've gained something from them, come on back and let's take another study sometime. No better way to start out your morning than reading a bit of Scripture. Uh, it's the best way to, to reform this, to brainwash your brain, because our brains, and after being in this society, is very dirty. And our brains need washing. I know it's a negative connotation to hear the term brainwashing, but trust me, our brain is very dirty from society, and it could use a little washing. And this is the great rinser of all, this, uh, this milk and meat of God's Word. Uh, it's the only thing that can get our minds and our hearts right, uh, how God wants them to be. So there's no better way to start out the day and end them, as a matter of fact, than reading a little scripture. So I hope everybody has a nice day. And uh, hope to see you again someday.